On this All Saints Sunday, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my journey with Ancestry.com. It began back in February of this year when I spit into a tube and sent it off for processing. Perhaps you've done the same. And while I was waiting to receive the results, I began digging into my family's history. Gary often refers to it as the rabbit hole because once you get started, it only goes deeper and deeper and it's easy to get lost for several hours before you surface again. And there were a lot of things I already knew about my ancestors based on my family stories that I heard growing up and the handwritten data I already possessed. But wow, there were a few big surprises along the way. For instance, I was always told that my ethnicity was 75% German, with the other 25% being split between Polish and Austrian. I thought my dad's side was pure German when, surprise, surprise, my great-grandfather John Sloan entered the picture. Oh yes, John Sloan. He came to the United States from Ireland, and when I got the DNA test results back, I found out that his DNA was Scottish. And I have never heard of this man before in my life. My dad never mentioned him, and this was his grandfather. Needless to say, this past St. Patrick's Day was celebrated with gusto. I also discovered that my great-grandmother and grandfather on my mother's side, Leon and Mary Petrusa, were from what was then called Galicia, which is now southeastern Poland and western Ukraine. According to a census form they filled out, they said their native language was Ukrainian, which was a total surprise to both me and my mother. We always thought they spoke Polish. We thought Leon was from Austria, but he was definitely from Galicia which had a nickname of Austrian Galicia, so it's easy to see how that oral history got a bit mixed up. My newly discovered family ties to Ukraine only strengthened my sense of solidarity and kinship with the Ukrainian people this year, and I felt a profound bond with them because now they really were my people. Finally, the most fun part of my ancestry journey happened when tracing two of my great-grandparents on my mother's side. Henry and Sophie Rice. Some of you know I've always felt a connection to Henry, and I've told a few stories about him over the years. But Sophie's side yielded the best results. I was able to trace my family back to my seven times great-grandparents, Johann Adam Fritsch and Anna Maria Munch, both of whom were born in 1761. They were baptized, married, and buried in a small rural town called Bayenheim, and the entire family family line was tied to the church that was in Bayenheim all the way up through my 3x great-grandmother, Sophia Goldstrom, and my 2x great-grandmother, Margaret Pearl, when that family immigrated to America in 1853. And the search also yielded photos of both of those people, which was amazing and such a real treasure to have those. And this summer while in Germany, Gary and I actually got to visit Bayenheim and we walked the hallowed grounds of both the church and the city. And needless to say, that was a really profound experience for me. And I share this with you on All Saints Sunday because this day of the church year has always been my favorite outside of Christmas and Easter. And some of you might think that's strange since All Saints Sunday tends to make some people feel very sad. And this is understandable, especially if we've lost a loved one recently. However, the power of this day is that it reminds us that the ties which bind us to these people are never truly broken. Our connection to those whom St. Paul called the great cloud of witnesses is quite profound when we think about it. It connects us not only to our blood or adopted kin, it also connects us with all the saints of every time and every place. And wow, that'll blow your mind when you really think about it. And it connects us to the saints whose pictures are going to be on the table at the church this morning. And we may or may not know who those people are, and I've tried to include a couple photos in the video for you to be able to see. But their love and their faith is the foundation upon which we built this faith community and this church building. They believed in abiding Savior in both good times and in bad. They never gave up on the dream God planted in their hearts. And it was their dream that brought me to all of you. I hope you'll join me this morning in giving thanks to these dearly departed saints. 
I know somehow they are still cheering us on. And if we listen closely, we can hear them say, we love you. We believe in you. Be faithful to the vision God has planted in your hearts and carry abiding Savior into a new and bright future. We've passed the torch on to you. So run the race, my friends, and run it well. To give you a Bible reference for this sentiment, St. Paul stated it beautifully in Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And so our connection to these saints, whose pictures will be on the center of the table, is very real and visceral. But we are also connected to people whose pictures other folks brought with them to church this morning. Some people wrote their names on place cards or lit a candle in their honor at a candle lighting station that we have set up. And those people are here to cheer us on as well. And for those of you who are watching this by video, I hope other people will come to mind for you, those saints that you want to remember. And I hope that that realization that we are still connected to all of those people will make us happy today instead of sad. I hope it will give us the courage we need to face whatever life throws at us. Each of these people that we remember and recall faced their own unique challenges and hardships. They all had their equal share of triumphs as well as defeats. And we can draw strength from their stories and we can still feel the love and wisdom they imparted to us as a church and as individuals. Author and poet Linda Hogan stated it this way, walking, I am listening to a deeper way. Suddenly, all my ancestors are behind me. Be still, they say. Watch and listen. You are the result of the love of thousands. This is great advice for us on this All Saints Sunday. And I hope we will all take the time to be still, to stop our need to always be productive, to rest when our bodies and souls are weary. I hope we will take the time to watch and listen to quiet our minds so that we can hear what our ancestors have to say to us, to train our sight not only to look at what's right in front of our eyes, but also to see the part we play in a much bigger story. We are the result of the love of thousands, and I hope and pray that each of us can feel that love today. I hope we can soak it in so that it pulses with life and vitality in every cell of our being. My dear friends, this is such a powerful day if we choose to embrace it fully. And I hope we will all take the time to remember those ancestors whose love and wisdom made us who we are today. They may be well known to us. They may be complete and total strangers whose names we've never heard. They may be recently discovered kin in the documents on Ancestry.com. But whoever they may be, I have no doubt they are here with us today. They are a part of the great cloud of witnesses that cheers us on as we run the race of faith. Let us give thanks for each and every one of them, and may their love and wisdom give us the strength and courage we need to face whatever challenges life throws at us. Amen.